Welcome back. In this segment, we're going to focus on a couple of issues making news in Albany. And to do that, we're joined by State Senator David Carlucci. Mr. Senator Carlucci is a Democrat and the conference whip for the IDC. That's the breakaway group of Democrats who caucus with Republicans. Senator, thank you for joining us. He represents all of Rockland and parts of Westchester County. And we're going to begin with an issue that you've been focused on for quite some time, raising the age of criminal responsibility in New York. New York is one of two states that treats 16 and 17 year olds as adults in the justice system, even for lesser crimes. The other state is North Carolina, and they're now considering a bill to raise the age there. And for the first time, raising the age has made it into the budget for the New York State Senate, which is controlled by the GOP. This would seem to clear the way for raising the age to become law in New York. Senator, is that a fair read on where we are right now? Well, we've been pushing this issue forward. I just I wanted to correct one thing you mm -hmm. said at the beginning. Um, I caucus in independently. So I'm a Democrat, but do not caucus with the Republicans. The Independent Democratic Conference caucuses uh, separately. And the idea there is to move the issues forward. You know, raise the age is a perfect example. This is something that's been talked about for a while. It's gotten some more attention, thankfully. But like you said, we're one of only two states in the nation that still treat 16 and 17 year olds with the criminal responsibility. So you know, recently I was just up at Hudson Correctional Facility, and that's a facility now that houses our, we net, really call it a youth prison, unfortunately, um, <clears throat> because the governor has signed an executive order isolating the 16 and 17 year olds from the adult prison population. So the big issue now is if we can raise the age of criminal responsibility, what we'll be doing is really getting these children um, a leg up and an opportunity. You go to a prison now, these kids go to a prison, what I say is you might as well give them a life sentence because the recidivism rate goes through the roof. They need, they need help, they don't need incarceration. Getting Republicans in the state Senate to play ball on this had been one of the big hurdles. Now right. it appears as though they are. Are you confident that this will get through, at least in this budget I, yeah, session? This has been a big uh, priority for myself and many of my colleagues. And what we've been doing is, is really focusing in on the details. The governor came out uh, pushing this initiative a few years back. And he talked about raising the age of criminal responsibility, but unfortunately the details weren't there. And when we talk about raising the age of criminal responsibility, okay, what happens to these, to these youth? Uh, where do they go? And that's been the debate right now. Uh, do these crimes wind up in family court? Mm -hmm. Do they go to an adolescence diversion program? Or are they in criminal court? And that's what's really being uh, negotiated right now. And, and that should, we'll see how that plays out in the, in the coming weeks, and, and hopefully we'll have some movement on that. I know it's been an issue that we focused on quite a bit here on RFL, and I think there's a lot of goodwill towards that. Now, raise the age is one of the issues where the IDC or the independent Democrats are working with Republicans to advance a Democratic priority. But there's also been plenty of friction. This week, Democratic state Senate leaders accused the IDC of collaborating with the GOP to work against Democrats. The IDC got its own budget proposal to the floor of the Senate, but the Democratic Party's budget did not. Democratic leaders called IDC members Trumpian and Trump Democrats and called their budget Republican light. And I'm, I'm curious, can you understand some of the frustration of Democrats who are saying, well, we're not even able to espouse our, our Democratic agenda as uh, the same way, in part because the IDC is working with the Republican Party? Well, I would say it's not because the Independent Democratic Conference is working with Republicans. It's that, unfortunately, uh, the Republicans have the majority in the New York State Senate. And that's because, un unfortunately, they've elected more Republicans than Democrats. But, but, and, you're, but you're a Democrat, right. and, and your party's Senate agenda, budget agenda, never got to the floor of the State Senate, whereas your IDC budget did. And right. that... I, I mean, I can see some voters. Sure, I mean, and so what, what I'm trying to do is say, how do we move our issues forward? Uh, and a lot of people are very excited right now and upset, and rightfully so, because of the policies we've been seeing coming from the Trump administration. And the budget proposals they're putting out, I mean, will wreak havoc in New York State. And that's why we have to do everything possible to have a seat at the table, push some of these issues, push these progressive issues, like we're talking about, raise the ages is one example of many. And that's where I said, hey, where can we find some common ground? Uh, where can we make sure that these issues are being pushed forward instead of just standing in the corner screaming and yelling? And, and that's, that's really the difference, to say, hey, I'm a Democrat. I believe in Democratic principles. However, right now, the Senate Republicans do control the state Senate. Uh, that's without the Independent Democratic Conference. They have uh, the majority of votes. And, and that's the reality. So it's, it's, hey, okay, instead of just yelling and screaming, how can we come to the table and work towards some of these initiatives and get them done? So there's plenty of frustration. I definitely understand and appreciate that. What I'm trying to do is say, as a, as a pragmatic uh, legislator, 
How do we get these progressive policies addressed? And first of all, how do we make sure the issues of the Hudson Valley are being addressed and residents are being protected and served? You mentioned that frustration, and that frustration and the rift between the IDC and mainline Democrats heated up and spilled out onto the Senate floor Wednesday for all to see. We told you the Democratic leaders called IDC members Trump Democrats and more, which prompted this response from freshman IDC Democrat Marisol Alcantara, who represents Washington Heights. Senator Daenerys call me and my colleagues a Trump Republican. I would like to remind him that at the end of the day, he's a white man with a degree from Harvard. And I refuse to have him use his white privilege to, I am speaking, I have the floor now, to Sen accuse me. Senator Alcantara, please. If they don't like the substance of what they're doing, that's their problem. I would like to know how many times my colleague has been called at the N war or a spec. How many times has he been refused entry into any place? How many times has my colleague of any of his family members been stopped and Senator Flanagan, why do you rise? Now, you're not Senator Alcantara, so I'm not going to ask you to defend her comments, but. And full disclosure, I live in her district. Mm. She campaigned as a Democrat without any indication that she was going to even considering IDC. I would disagree with she, that. I, I, Senator. Absolutely. No, she was fully out there saying that she was. And that then, was a contested primary. And, and then all of a sudden yeah. she's in the... She's in the well, no, I, I would mean, disagree with that. There are a that. lot that of people in that frigid, district yeah. who think that they got a little bit of a bait and switch. And I can understand how there would be Democrats in your district who might feel the same way. Well, what I would say to that is, the for me, the Independent Democratic Conference is something that I founded back in 2011. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to say, hey, we've got a break from the status quo of not getting anything done. And obviously that example is um, that, you've, that you showed is an example well, that is something not to be proud of, and it's something that I've worked hard to 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 fight to fight the, the name calling, uh, the the, the nitty gritty that politics that really people are disgusted with is saying, hey, instead of calling people names, instead of uh, just tearing people apart, how do we come together and get our agenda passed? Very quickly, because we're almost out of time. The Dream Act is one of the things that Democrats and I, I know you on the IDC support that also. The Republicans aren't going along with it. Is it, how effective is that partnership if some key Democratic priorities aren't being addressed? Well, again, this is, we're Democrats, right? And it's about what can we get done? And, and, and are we going to be able to get everything that's ever been, uh, that we wanted to get done? No. Um, but can we push our agenda forward, like fighting for more education aid for our students, uh, making sure that the issues we care about in our districts, like in East Ramapo, are getting addressed, the issues in Ossining School District, where we have an explosion in enrollment, it's not being addressed by the State Education Department. These are the issues that are real that we've got to address and all these other issues I'm hopeful we can get past but it's going to take a partnership from the Democrats and Republicans I, to get it done. I got to leave it there. I would love to continue this conversation. I wish Look we had more time it. for it because it's it's a good one. Senator Carlucci, thank you so much. Thanks really for appreciate having me. it.